Hello, everybody, and welcome back to Odin's Movie Blog. I am the critic who is a cynic. Hope you're doing well. And today, we're talking about media lies. The media lies are continuing to spin this story about Rotten Tomatoes and about Captain Marvel. For anyone that has been living under a rock, for anyone that might be new to the channel, welcome. Uh, we've had a lot of growth recently, which has been absolutely amazing. But for those that do not know, what was happening on Rotten Tomatoes was that Rotten Tomatoes, as some people apparently can't still figure out what exactly is going on, Rotten Tomatoes used to have an option where before a movie was released, you could click one of two options. Either that you wanted to see that movie, and then you could leave a comment about to why you want to see the movie, or you could say, not interested. And then you could also leave a comment to explain, oh, I'm not interested in seeing this movie. Notice how it's either you're interested to see the movie, or you're not interested to see the movie. At no point, at no point whatsoever, does this include a review of the movie. Those do not happen until the movie has actually been released. Then you can leave a star rating to, te to tell everyone this is how good or bad the movie is and here's my explanation. Before a movie came out in Rotten Tomatoes, you used to be able to say, I'm either interested or not interested. Let's say there's a film that looks really good, Avengers Endgame, boom, I want to see that. Let's say there's a movie that looks like it's gonna be really bad. I'll just give an example of R.I.P.D., which is one of my least favorite movies of all time. Boom, I'm not interested in seeing R.I.P.D. No reviews at any point have happened. No reviews at any point have happened. Yet somehow, some way, not only have the media not been able to figure this out, not only have uh, people, you know, defending this movie, like, for example, the guy that's playing Shazam has come out to defend this as well from a certain perspective. Not only have all the real trolls on Twitter not figured this point out yet when they say, oh my gosh, you're just review bombing and review bombing. If even these idiots can't realize that these are not reviews, these were people saying, I'm not interested in seeing this movie. I do not want to see this movie, and here is my explanation as to why. But not only do you have them, now you have the president of Rotten Tomatoes. Actually, technically, they're the president of Fandango, which owns Rotten Tomatoes, which I think is kind of interesting that Fandango is obviously showing a lot of preference to this movie. It doesn't show any kind of maybe inside baseball going on to try and protect this film. And, they, you know, remember there was Fandango themselves who put out that tweet saying, Captain Marvel is the third highest grossing film on the pre-sale market from Fandango in Fandango's history. And I've pointed out how many holes and how that does not matter as far as what an overall film is going to make at the box office, because guess what? Solo broke some records, too, in the pre-sales and it ended up losing 200 million dollars but here is again once a, a, a grand example of not just the media shilling it up for captain marvel not just the media now coming in to defend ron tomatoes even going so far as to say that ron tomatoes has saved captain marvel yeah we'll get to that in a second if you want to really see the connections that are going on here oh the media have overplayed their hand by a vast amount but also now we have the rotten tomatoes president themselves again interestingly enough it's actually the president of fandango because if you actually look to the president of <laughs> of rotten tomatoes guess what she is she is a pink-haired feminist she is a pink-haired feminist, so it makes total sense to me that these changes would happen and coincide with, with you know, <laughs> with Captain Marvel. But apparently, according to the president, according to the person that they've interviewed over at CNET, which, guys, CNET has just become the bastion of everything that is good in the world. I didn't realize that they were getting involved into these kinds of political discussions. It's very interesting to me. Um, but anyway, it says, Rotten Tomatoes president, we didn't change the site to protect Captain Marvel. Users will no longer be able to leave a review for a movie that hasn't yet hit theaters among other changes. There have never been reviews, and anyone that ever did leave a review, they only could ever say not interested or interested, so that way when anyone would see their so-called review, they would look at it and say, oh, this isn't real, the movie hasn't come out yet, there's no score. Okay, I have a brain, I have a mind, I can figure that out for myself, but apparently the media can't. It's not really that the media can't, it's that the media is going just to continue to perpetuate this lie. It's very interesting because there is a, uh, there's a feminist, um, uh, rather, no, quite, sorry, a feminazi on Twitter who basically goes out of her way to try and get the attention of some bigger channels out there uh, because she wants her name to be constantly mentioned. I'm not even going to mention her name because guess what? I'm not going to give her the attention that she wants. I'm not going to give her the attention that she wants, but she's there. And so she is trying to point out and trying to basically argue this fact and also is trying to go after people like us to get attention. That is exactly what is going on here. That is exactly what is going on here. You have people going out of their way to blatantly lie to you about this situation. At no point have reviews ever been left. So the media knows that that's true, yet they continue to spin this web of lies because they are protecting Captain Marvel. Because they are protecting the only movie that has gotten any serious traffic lately on the website.
But oh, yeah, oh, the president says it's not because of Captain Marvel. Review site Rotten Tomatoes is instituting some changes, leading many to believe it's responding to the recent controversy over the site's Captain Marvel page. But Paul Yanover, president of Fandango, again Fandango, which owns the site, told CNET that is not the whole story. In case you were, okay, so then it's going to be, uh, okay, here we go. So here's some more lies, guys. In case you were snapped away by Thanos and Avengers Infinity War and thus missed the recent controversy, here's a recap. Captain Marvel doesn't come out until March 8th, but users were already leaving negative comments about the film. Ooh, comments! Oh my gosh! You can't leave a negative comment about a film on Rotten Tomatoes. A process dubbed review bombing. Yes, a process dubbed review bombing by a bunch of media shills who either don't know what a actual movie review is or are blatantly lying about it. I'll let you decide which one it is. Many recent comments seem to come from those who are angry at Starbucks Larson. Exactly right. People were choosing on Rotten Tomatoes before they went through the change that they were not interested in seeing the movie. They've taken it down since then, but luckily we have, oh, look at this, we have this website, which uh, this so-called, uh, this, this, this feminazi on Twitter tried to say, oh, look, it's totally, you can't click on it. It's totally rigged. Even though all she was able to show is that on her mobile device, it took a while for the page to load. And when it load, it happened to do like, oh, oh, it's going to move a little bit. Oh, wait, oh. Uh, uh, it moved because it just loaded up for the first time because guess what that happens but this is what it used to be on Rotten Tomatoes you used to have this option of not interested want to see it on top of that you are also able to add comments as to why you're not interested or as to why you want to see it please note that these are not reviews a review is when you see a film and break down whether you like it or not the want to see score, as it is known, which is still up there because of some awesome person who decided just to throw this together. Basically, what they did was they took all the reviews that were on Rotten Tomatoes, took those same numbers, same percentage, and then just said, all right, now we're going to keep everything going live here. And so the number has not dropped nearly as much as it probably would have on Rotten Tomatoes because Rotten Tomatoes was getting a lot of traffic because guess what? People have to create profiles. People have to connect their social media accounts to actually have a vote in the first place. So yeah, oh yeah, there's a bunch of random trolls, there's a bunch of random robots. Sure. Keep going with that. But as you can see here, 26.3% of people apparently still want to see it. It was at 27% before Rotten Tomatoes shut everything down. But it has nothing to do. It has nothing to do with Rotten Tomatoes, right? Nothing to do with Rotten Tomatoes. But anyway, that's what you see there. Want to see, don't want to see. There have been no reviews taking place. And this lie, this perpetual lie that the media shills are throwing out there is so infuriating because it is leading people who either are just innocent bystanders who are just fans saying, what the hell's going on? And so therefore they're reading these articles and, and saying, oh, that's terrible. Wait, they were writing fake reviews? That's not good. That, that's something that should be stopped. I'm telling you this right now, if you're watching this video, that's not what happened. All you had were people clicking, I'm not interested in the movie. Again, just like with this website here, they clicked, not interested. Now I've already voted, so it says, oh, look, you've already voted. So basically all they were doing was that, and many of them were just adding their comments saying, hey, I don't want to see this because of X, Y, Z. So that's all that they were doing. And it was real life people. Got up to around 48,000. But apparently these were fake people. These were fake people. These were trolls, they say, who were review bombing. When you have someone saying that this is review bombing, when you have the editor or the president of Fandango, when you have uh, sites like CNET and all these other sites that I'm about to cover, saying that this has anything to do with driving down the reviews or review scores for a movie before it comes out, please know that is a blatant lie. I've literally just shown you what actually happened. I've, I, again, I tried to show you the reality of the world something that SJW, you know, crazy people do not have any perception of, do not have any understanding of, and that is the truth. That is what was happening. People were clicking uninterested. But apparently now that is review bombing. Again, it's not. But let's see what the, let's see what the president of Fandango has to say. The changes are not simply a reaction to, oh, gee, there's some noise created around certain movies. <sighs> Yan over told me, yes, some adjustments are, are aimed as what he calls noise reduction when high profile films such as Captain Marvel Star Wars movies attract trolls with agendas. But as a whole, these changes are part of a long term strike a uh, site strategy. Really? So you're trying to tell me, president, you're trying to tell me that you are going to change this score. You are going to take away the audience participation, which, by the way, here's the fun fact. Here's the fun fact in their own press release. In fact, you know what? Let's go ahead, let's go ahead and pull that up. Keep that in mind what they just said. 
This was planned from the very beginning. Oh yes, we've been noise reduction. These are things that we've had planned from the very beginning of time itself. Oh, from the very beginning of time. This right here, this entire setup, this was going to be changed from the very beginning. This was going to be changed from the very beginning. Oh look, oh look, oh look, let's see the blog post here. Let's see the blog post here. Remember this? I talked about this a few days ago when it said that, oh yeah, you know, we're making some changes every now and then and you know, we're just going to be doing anything like that. Right here. We have decided that turning off this feature, the like or the um, I want to see, don't want to see, for now is the best course of action. We have decided that turning off this feature for now, that, in, that implies temporarily, is the best course of action, and yet you have the president saying that these are changes that have been planned for a very long time. You have the person saying, oh, we were always going to delete it. We were always going to get rid of it. So who's telling the truth here? Is it the president of Fandango or is it an official press release? Where you're going off explaining, oh yeah guys, things are going to change. And even in your press release, guess what you do? You claim a bunch of so-called trolls and so-called <laughs> so called bad actors. And you perpetuate the same lie of so-called review bombing. So Ron Tomatoes lies blatantly on its website. The president of Fandango who owns Ron Tomatoes has just blatantly lied. Again, I just showed you both things next to each other. They both cannot be true. You cannot temporarily temporarily disable something. For no reason, you're temporarily disabling it because you are protecting Captain Marvel. We didn't change the site to protect Captain Marvel. Now, if this had said we didn't just change the site to uh, didn't just change the site to protect Captain Marvel because we had other things planned, but we did indeed react to Captain Marvel, well, then that headline may not be as catching, but it at least would be at least would be true. So once again, if you are still under this curtain that you think the media is being honest with you, if you still believe honestly that Captain Marvel has no agenda behind it itself, you need to wake the hell up. Have you ever seen the media gone this so far to defend a movie, a singular movie? Have you ever seen it? Have you ever seen a website change its entire system temporarily as it says, we've decided to turn this feature off for now as the best course of action. Best for who? Yeah, maybe best for Captain Marvel. Maybe best for Disney, who probably paid your ass to do this in the first place. As you have your own freaking president going out and lying to everybody about why these changes actually happen. I, I believe that they had changes for the website in mind. But this whole, oh, oh, you know, the, 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 the like, you know, the want to see, don't want to see. You know, the I'm interested or I'm not interested. Oh, that was always in the plans. Even when you admit, oh, no, no, it's a temporary matter. We're, we're taking that feature away temporarily. They did this purely to protect Captain Marvel. And if you want even more proof of that, guess what? The shill media itself <laughs> pretty much admits to it. Here's Wired.com. Ron Tomatoes revamp could save Captain Marvel. Yes, that's right. Could save Captain Marvel. The flood of trolling on Ron Tomatoes started about a month ago, weeks before the release of Captain Marvel. Commenters on the site were already claiming the movie was garbage and that they had no intentions of seeing it. That is not what they were saying. That is not what they were saying. And then they point out one, terrible movie, hate it already. This means that the person thinks the movie is going to be terrible and hates it already before it's even come out, which guess what, is an opinion that you can have. I guarantee you, if the, I guarantee this writer at Wired, if there was a movie coming out that was all about Jesus Christ, and it was all about, you know, how he is the savior of all mankind, I bet you would say, oh yeah, this movie looks awful. Yeah, this movie looks awful. I have no interest in seeing that. That's exactly what's going on here. If you were to tell people, hey, guess what? We have a documentary coming out that is going to be talking about how great President Trump is. Oh, I have no interest in seeing that. Of course you don't have an interest in seeing it. And you have every right to say you have no interest. But I am not going to say that, oh my god, you're, you're review bombing the movie. No, what I would say is, oh, so that's just your political ideology? That is just what you think? Okay, fine. <laughs> This movie is destined to flop. That is an opinion. Once again, these are not reviews. These are people saying they have no interest. And also, this people, these people right here on Wired, on CNET, the actual president of Rotten Tomatoes slash Fandango, you know, all of these people writing these articles, they are lying to you. These are people who understood what Captain Marvel herself said, what Brie Larson said. 
I don't care. People oftentimes forget this quote. She said very clearly, I don't care about what a white man has to say about A Wrinkle in Time. It wasn't made for them. She was claiming some moral authority that a movie that came out, that got a general release, was not made for a gigantic group of people in the United States of America. All the while, during that same speech, saying three times, I don't hate white men. Oh, I don't, I don't hate white men. I, you know, I don't hate white men. All the while saying that sarcastically as well. So you had that comment, and then of course you had the comment recently where she says, Oh, my press pool is too white. It's too white, and so therefore I, I'm going to be more inclusive. And everyone's saying, Oh, what's wrong with inclusion? Nothing's wrong with inclusion. However, if she's just going to go out of her way to say, Oh, I'm so high and mighty, and oh, wait a minute, you're of a different color or sex. Oh, I therefore must take care of you because you cannot possibly get up to the level of everyone else that's getting the same press release titles because of your race or gender. Who's the one being racist and sexist then? Because I firmly believe that you could be of any race, of any gender, and you can make it. Just because you happen to be a certain race or gender and not be making it does not mean that the sole reason why you are not making it is because of your race or gender. But that is the narrative that she wants to push, and that is the narrative that we are rejecting. That is the narrative that is re resulting in this pushback as to why we have no interest, why we don't want this movie to even exist in the first place. And for anyone that's going to say, oh, you just you hate it because there's women in it, then where in the hell was this for Wonder Woman? Why did I go out of my way to support that movie and praise that movie as being the best DCU film ever? Why do I continue to praise Gal Gadot for showing us what true feminism actually is? This is not feminism. As I've said in previous videos, this is feminazism. These are people who want to try and tear down society. These are people who say, because I'm a white man, I cannot have a valid opinion. Because I am a white man, anything I say about Captain Marvel cannot be taken seriously because it wasn't made for me. That is the mindset of Captain Marvel herself. That is the mindset of Brie Larson, of Wired.com, of Rotten Tomatoes, of all of these people. They are trying to demonize an entire group of people. They are demonizing me just because I happen to have white skin and happen to have been born a male. And they hate me for that. And anytime I say anything, that they don't agree with. Anytime I don't follow the company line, I'm the one called a racist. I'm the one called a sexist. When in reality, all I'm doing is giving my honest opinions and honest thoughts, trying to stay as objective as I can. And when I'm being subjective, when I'm sharing an opinion that is not, you know, that is not just an objective reality, I try every single second of my time to be able to make it clear that that's what I'm saying. But this is the nonsense. That is why we are rejecting it. Oh, but the movie itself hasn't come out. How do you even know? When the star of the movie is saying this, that's a good sign. When the trailers for the movie is implying it, that's a really good sign. And even more so than anything else, when the freaking source material that it's based on, which is filled to the brim with SJW identity politics, and that is what's being used as the source material for the movie itself, I'm sorry. It does not take a genius to put one, one, one together. It doesn't take a genius. So go ahead and just continue this fake, fake news story. That's right, I said fake news. Oh my God, he said fake news. Oh my God, he must be a Trump supporter. Oh my God, he must be a white supremacist. Didn't vote for Donald Trump and <laughs> seriously, seriously, all because I don't follow your agenda. All because I don't you know, believe in the things that you wanna believe and all because I don't uh, lie to people up front like you did several times over about these so-called reviews that don't exist. But, oh, don't get me wrong, Rotten Tomatoes, rest use Captain Marvel from review trolls. Again, there's never been a review. Those were not reviews. The reviews aggregator has stopped comments being posted before the film's release after Brie Larson's forthcoming movie attracted hostility for having a female lead. It has nothing to do with her being a female lead. If this was true, if this had any truth to it, you would have had the same thing happen with Wonder Woman and any other film that had a female lead. Ant Man and the Wasp would have been absolutely destroyed because guess what? There was co billing there. Oh my god, there was a wham in there. Oh my god, I'm so afraid of wham. No, we're not. We don't give a damn about that. We don't care. We don't care, man. Her being a woman has zero to do with it. Her being an SJW has everything to do with it. The media covering up for her and covering up for this nonsense has everything to do with it. So before you go off on your little high horse, before you go off and try to preach to the masses about, oh, you know, fighting back against online trolls, you know, putting out fake reviews, 
non-constructive. How about instead, you take a look at yourself in the mirror and say, am I being honest today? And if your answer is no, then shut the hell up. If your answer is yes, then please start writing that truth because I cannot wait to see it. Because at the end of the day, we know that this movie, the concept of Captain Marvel herself, Carol Danvers as a character, based on the 2012 reboot that has been that has been rebooted over four times because no one's buying the comic, because people don't like her story. No one wanted a Captain Marvel movie except for this small, hardcore group of feminazis. Seriously, that, that was it. Look, go up, look up the Carol Corps. They're the reasons why this movie's being made. We're not going after this film because it's a woman. We're going after this movie because that woman has an agenda and has admitted so much. She has said that she hopes that this movie, she wants this movie to be her agenda. She said that she, she is letting this movie be her form of activism. Why is a movie activism? Why is a movie activism? You know, take, take away everything else that she said in the past about white men. The fact that she's admitted this film is her activism. What kind of activism could it be? Oh, wait, let's go to the comics. Let's look to the source material. Let's look to how they're promoting the film. Oh, wait, that's right. They're trying to warp the minds of people to accept something that is not true which is identity politics, which is that if you are of a certain race or gender, you cannot have valid opinions about other people or about other people's ideas because they are not the same race or gender as you. If that is not the very definition of racism and sexism, I don't know what the hell else is. If you say that I can't have a valid opinion of A Wrinkle in Time, which is a garbage movie, and you say you can't say that because you're not a, a young black woman or a young mixed race woman, so therefore you can't have a valid opinion, I'm sorry, but that, that's stupid. That, that has no basis in reality. I thought we were supposed to look at each other for the content of our character, not the color of our skin, not the gender of us, you know? I thought, that, I thought that's the whole point of all of this. I thought that's what e actual equality is. But they, they don't care about equality. This, this isn't feminism. This isn't feminism at all. This, this is essentially a, 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 an attempt at totalitarianism. They want to control the minds. And if you don't agree with their mindset, boom, you're a racist. Boom, you're a sexist. Boom. Pick any name in the book. You are the scum of the earth if you don't fall in line with their politics. But what are, what are they trying to do now? Oh, wait, that's right. They're trying to send young girls to see Captain, to Captain Marvel for free. They're trying to provide free screens for women, for young girls to go see this movie. How is that not going to be taken as indoctrination? Why are we going to see this movie? Oh, because there's a female lead. Why is that important? Oh, because it's never happened before. Wait, it's never happened before? Oh, then that must make it a big deal. Only it has. Only, only it has. And if you're going to try and tell me that these organizations are not going to try and push some other political agenda and aren't in the process of doing that, I'm sorry, but you have another thing coming. The fact that she is retweeting these movements, the fact that people on the left are going out of their way to promote these uh, GoFundMes of, oh, let's send girls to the movies instead of giving them sandwiches, instead of giving them food, instead of giving them beverages, instead of giving them a house to sleep in. No, no, no. That, those things are important. Helping the homeless, helping those who have nothing. That's not important. What's important is that they go see this movie. What's important is that they go see this movie and that they get woke. That's all there is to it. So please, Rotten Tomatoes, President, spare me from your lies. CNET, Wired.com, uh, The Guardian, Sci-Fi, please spare me from all of your spin and all of your lies. All of this comes back to one truth. People were hearing what she had to say. People were seeing the trailers that seemed to reiterate it. People were looking into the past of this character and they said, hey, I'm out. I have no interest in seeing this movie. Where can I express that? Oh, wait a minute. Rotten Tomatoes. All right, let me click that uninterested rated. Oh, it can, I can explain why too. Okay, this, uh, this movie wasn't made for me apparently. This movie looks awful. And now those people are getting painted as, as, as review bombers. Like, uh, if, you, if you do not get it at this point, you are either a part of the problem, you are either a part of the shill media, or you are a moron. Th like, those are the only two options. And if you're part of a shill media, if you think this is going to help you, if you think that you have more power than the YouTube community does at this point, go ahead and look at some of the reviews that we're getting on this. Go ahead and look at the ratings that we're getting on this content. People are tired of your spin. People are tired of your nonsense. The reason why people have been flocking to channels like mine, John Talks, Geeks and Gamers, World Class BSers, and that Star Wars girl, um, Ivan Ortega, I mean, Nerdrotic, uh, so many others, 
is because we do not hold back. We do not BS. We do not make things up. We don't just lie. If we're speculating, we say, hey, this is what I think. This is what I think this means. If we want to provide proof because we want to say that this is actually true, we do that. But you, you instead just spin and spin and spin and spin. And it's gotten to the point now where everything you say is just tinged with lies. And one of the worst societies that we can live in is a society when the media cannot be trusted. Because the media used to have an important job. The media used to be the ones exposing the corruption, exposing the -the behind-the-scenes nonsense. But now they're a part of it. Oh, why are you freaking out about this? It's just a movie. (laughs) Okay. You got me there. Yeah, it's just a movie. To which I say, okay, so then why do you care? I care because I love movies. I care because my passion have always been movies. And what I hate to see is I hate to see movies becoming so freaking politicized that you cannot even say, I don't want to see a movie without being labeled as a troll, racist, or sexist. It disgusts me. And also, before I end the video, uh, I want to give a huge shout out to somebody. Uh, Nemesis08 uh, is the name that he goes by on YouTube and, and on Twitter as well. Uh, he sent me this shirt today, and I just got it. So thank you very much. It says, it says uh, trust me. Trust me. I'm a Jedi. So that's what I leave with you. Guys, seriously, trust me. I'm a Jedi. You can go ahead and check these articles for yourself. Go ahead and do your own research. Seriously, don't always just take my word for it. Do your own research. But just understand that these people are going to try and spin every damn thing. I just proved to you earlier that the Rotten Tomatoes president is lying blatantly by saying this had nothing to do with Rotten Tomatoes, or rather this had nothing to do with Captain Marvel, and yet they've said very clearly that they are doing this, they are removing this feature temporarily as the best course of action because of what happened to Captain Marvel. They are protecting this movie. And I'm left with that one question. Why this movie? What is it about this movie that they want to protect? And when you put everything else together, it makes it very freaking easy to see there must be some kind of agenda in this film that they want to protect and they want to support. And if that is not enough for you to say, I'm out. I don't know what else is. But anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching. Uh, Seriously, you're all amazing and beautiful people. If you like this video, smash that like button. Give me a thumbs up. Give me a subscribe. You're all amazing. Seriously, it's been absolutely fantastic. The growth has been incredible. Thank you again, Nemesis08, for the t-shirt. And, and seriously, thank you every single person that has been uh, you know, sending me uh, you know, kind words. Uh, people who have been standing up for me on Twitter because of the actual trolls lying out of their ass to just get attention. Because that's all that it is these days is that they all realize, oh my gosh, we're losing the battle. Oh my gosh, I, I must stay relevant. I must say this thing that's totally false. I'll go ahead and try and keep it real. And I'll keep it real as long as I can. I never want to become a shill. I never want to become someone who will say something for a press pass, who will say something for a paycheck, who will say something just because I'm being told to do so. I will continue to be me. All that I ask is that you continue to be you. Thank you guys for watching. Have a wonderful day. And as always, God bless.